If you go to YouTube and type in Mundell Lowe, you will find a collection of videos and recordings that just go on and on and on. Some of the videos, the old kinescopes, reach back into the 50s. The recordings go back even further. You can see him in almost any setting you can imagine playing solo guitar, duets with other famous guitar players, trios, quartets, all-star sextets, working with jazz bands of different sizes, playing with a big band conducting a big band, playing one of his arrangements, conducting a full orchestra, strings and all, playing something he had written for a movie, or playing something he had written for the concert hall. You'll find him working with virtually every major jazz artist of that era. Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Benny Goodman, Clark Terry, Ed Shaughnessy, the Salter Finnegan Orchestra, Toots Thielman, Andre Previn, and the girl singers, well, Billie Holiday, Peggy Lee, Sarah Vaughn, Rosemary Clooney, the cream of the crop. Same thing with the guys. Sammy Davis, Steve Lawrence, Tony Bennett, Frank Sinatra. It's endless. Few of us ever get to meet our heroes. Fewer still ever get to actually work with them. And precious few get to form a friendship that lasts all the way to the end. Well, howdy, y'all. I'm Brian Hillegas, and those are not my words. Those are the words of Lloyd Wells, spoken at the eulogy for Mundell Lowe. Both of those fellows hail from Laurel, Mississippi. Mundell would say that he was from Shady Grove, damn near <laughs> Laurel, Mississippi. The song you've been listening to and just ended was I Loves You Porgy by George and Ira Gershwin. And that was Mundell Lowe playing solo guitar from the Poor Butterfly CD that he had recorded with Lloyd Wells and Jim Ferguson back in 2015. I believe he was about 93 years old at the time. Hell, I can't play like that now. Uh, <laughs> I'll never be able to play like that. But there are some folks that come close and one of those is my good friend Lloyd Wells. In the description or comment section of this broadcast, you should be able to find a link that will take you to another place on the internet, and you'll be able to listen to all of these recordings, uh, the podcast recordings that I'm conducting now with Lloyd, as well as these music recordings, and we're trying to put those all in one good place so that you'll have them and enjoy them for years to come. So enough of my rambling. Let's get into it now and listen to Lloyd talk about his mentor, hero, and friend, Mundell Lowe. Mundy was, uh, was one, of, one of the great jazz guitar players to, to come out of this country. Uh, he was born in Laurel, Mississippi, the same town that I'm from, in 1922, April the 21st, 1922. And, uh, he was a. He turned out to be a marvelous player. Uh, he also turned out he was a, a serious musician. He studied composition and arranging and orchestrating, and he he played with a bunch of big bands. Then he moved to New York, and he worked in all the studios, did all the television things. He was on an NBC staff for a bunch of years. Uh, worked. I, I don't. I don't know of another guitar player that worked with as many name 
jazz mm -hmm. personalities as he did. You almost can't think of someone of that era of a 40-year period of time that he did not work with. Uh, I met him in 1958, and uh, when I went to New York in 1964, I, I knew him for a couple of years, then they moved to California, and we had been friends ever since then. And uh, as I told you a little earlier, uh, that CD that you have that yeah, has, yeah. has that one song on it, that's the last time he, he came here to Lawrence House, and we went down to a little studio and re-recorded one of the tunes that were in there. And that's the last time he was in the studio, last time I was in one. Uh, he died a few years ago, two, a little over two years ago. On the 21st of April, he would have been 95. Oh, His man. wife, Betty, is now 96, I believe she's still alive. And you told me, when was the last time you talked to her, though? A week ago, I tried to call her on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you told me <laughs> just this year that she was married to Andre Previn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was Previn's. Her children are Previn's children, Alicia and can't think of the other one's name. Sorry. Did Monday Claudia? Have, Claudia. Did Monday have children? Monday had. He had a, a four children: Sherry, and uh, by his first wife. Yeah. And then uh, Debbie and Jessica and Adam by his second wife, Barbara. He and Betty had no children. Yeah. But uh, they certainly had got a house full. You know. when, I, when I did his eulogy down in Shady Grove, which is a little community just outside of Laurel, where they scattered his ashes, uh, in my eulogy I said at the front, if you want to know everything about Monday's playing and, and his orchestrating and his arranging and, and who he played with and all that, go to YouTube. I, I can't recall all that stuff because you can punch YouTube, like you said, and, and for days you see it all, you know. Uh, Was he an influence on you in terms of arranging? Heavy, or, heavy, heavy, heavy. Had you studied his works or you just... I, I just absorbed them. Yeah. Uh, I told him one time years and years ago that in, in all of... My heaviest arranging ever that I did, I did some in New York, but the heaviest stuff was the period of time that I worked at Opry Land, and you know how much all that was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told him that at, at times when different problems arose for different tunes, for different bands, for different uh, vocal things, any, any kind of problem, I would always stop just a minute and think, well, now what would Monday have done? Not that I necessarily would have would write it as he did, but I'd stop and think about it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I'd come up with an answer. You know, it's it's hard not to if 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 you listen to the he's he recorded so much. I mean, all kind of stuff, all kind of movie themes, all kind of jazz albums, uh, solo albums. Did he work with uh, Billy Holiday? Everybody, man. You Charlie can't, Parker. Uh, Charlie Parker, hell yeah. Absolutely, man. He recorded with Charlie Parker and Abe, but about one more guitar player that did that. You know? Is that right? I know. I mean, that, that's uh, rare. Yeah, and I got uh, on YouTube, uh, there was something I came across. I think I even sent it to you. Of course, I'm sure you had already seen it with, let's see if I can remember. It was Mundell. Was it him playing behind Mel Torme? I and then there that. might have been, and Ray Brown was playing bass. And I don't doubt I don't, I don't recall. No, but... I don't doubt that at all. He just knew everybody. Everybody, man. He had uh, he had lived for, I'll say, maybe 15 years to 20 years in New York. Mm -hmm. Been the, right in the center of everything that happened. And then he went to California and, and did the same thing. He did a bunch of film scores out there. They're just all over the place, man. Did some, some television things, a series that, you know, studied composition out there with some of those big time uh, film score composers and uh, and played the guitar and uh, all the time all back all it up a little bit I know that you had heard of Mundell uh, practically your whole life and how did you finally connect was it after you had come out of college and you were a, a band director for a period of high time school, high school four years four years I have the scars you have the scars to prove, like many other uh, right. former band directors, that's right. I know. That's right. 
And then, but you you decided that wasn't going to no, make didn't. it for you. So then somehow you reached out to to Monday. Was yeah, that the deal? Well, back up just a hair. 1958 when I was at University of Southern Mississippi. It's in the in the marching band as you had to be playing what. Uh, clarinet <clears throat> in a marching band not not really playing it Brian just kind of carrying it <laughs> anyway uh, one of the trips that the band took was uh, somewhere up north to play some halftime at a football game and we got a free day in New York City of course and and so I went around in Laurel to one of the stores where I knew one of Monday's sisters worked I can't remember her name I think it was Pearl I believe but I remember the store very well. And I went in there one day and I said, I'm, I'm Lord Wells. And we're going to get to go to New York in a couple of weeks. And I sure would like to, to uh, call your brother, you know, if, if at all possible. Would you give me his name? So she gave mm-hmm. me a phone number. It wasn't any problem. Oh, wow. So when we got to town, I called him and I said, look, we're in town for one day. Big time fans of yours. Can, can we buy you lunch? Can we come... To wherever you're working or what just anything we'll just get next to you a little bit today you know he says how'd you like to come to a uh, uh hit parade rehearsal do you remember the hit yeah parade yeah and he, but he didn't know who you were no he didn't know at all he was just nice he said you would you like to come to the hit parade i said yeah sure fine so he told me where to come and we went to it was they were rehearsing in an old hotel in the ballroom mm-hmm. upstairs an old hotel big orchestra it, uh, explain what hit parade was it, it was a, a first a radio show, then a television show yeah. that performed each each week with a, a core of performers. Uh, Dorothy Collins, uh, I can't think of the other three. There are two guys, two gals. Mm-hmm. And they, they took the hit songs of the week and did them in their, their arrangement of them. They didn't copy, you know, as we so often do now, copy the records exactly as they are. They didn't do that. They had arrangers who did their own arrangement of that song. So sometimes it was ridiculous, you know, but sometimes it was good. And uh, it was a big orchestra with strings, a whole nine yards. And uh, we went and watched it for about three hours there that afternoon. He showed me his guitar. He just had a new guitar made of D'Angelico. First time I ever heard that name. Wow. And... Uh, and I, I left him, and he got my phone number and so forth and so on. And, and we talked for, uh, off and on for whatever it was until till 1964, 58. What is that, six years, yeah. five or six years? So you'd just call him? I'd call him every once in a while. He would tell me about what he was doing. You know, he'd just mm-hmm. done a jazz album, or he just played for some big singer. Whatever. All interesting stuff, real inviting stuff. So in 64, I called him, I said, I said, I, I want to come up and spend two or three days with you and just watch you work. You know, so he says, come on. So I went up, spent a few days. We just tagged around with Did him. Did you stay with him? No, I stayed in a, in a hotel right next to where he lived. He had a big apartment up on, a uh, big apartment up on 90, West 98th Street. But he had three children and all that, you know, so... Uh, and I just followed him around for three days and, and he did all kind of stuff. You know, it was... A typical day was for him to do three recording sessions, you know, in a day. And then something that night, it was just, he was so busy, he was just running, you know. And uh, at the end of the thing, uh, Barbara, his wife, Barbara, cooked us a meal. <clears throat> and I took the guitar over and we sat and played and went in his den, sat and played the first time. And I read some stuff for him and uh, played some stuff. And I asked him then, I said, if I come up here, can I make a living? You know, mm-hmm. in, in this time, yeah. he said, sure. All you got to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is just come up here, you know. So I did. I went up uh, in June of that year. and uh, Was Louise with you? No, we weren't married then. You weren't married And then. Uh, I stayed uh, Christmas, came back, and we got married Christmas, and then went back up in 65. Monday, lived there for the rest of that year, and then at the end of that year, he and his wife and family moved out to, to California. Mm. Got a chance to write for the TV uh, a show called Love on a Rooftop. I remember you know, the name yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> he left, and they lived in Los Angeles for a long time, and then uh, Barbara died, and then, then they, he married Betty eventually, and, and they moved out to 
San Diego. Mm-hmm. That's where he lived. What was unique, though, about Mundell's guitar playing? Uh, first thing that you noticed was his sound. He always got a, a, a big, fat, round sound for single single lines, single notes. Mm-hmm. They were pretty things. They weren't bright and brilliant. Didn't make your teeth itch, you know, that type thing. <laughs> they were, it was just pretty, it was a pretty sound, a pretty guitar, pretty amplified guitar sound. And other than that, he was always clean as a pen, you know, played, uh, he was able to play whatever, pretty much whatever he thought at the time. Uh, he, he he did drop the low string down to a D. Mm. And he had he'd started that, he got that from Johnny Smith when he was in New York. So all his, immediately all his chord forms and all are different than you, than you hear the normal guitar player play so it's something strange there you know uh, with a, all that is backed with a an unbelievable knowledge of of harmony mm. you know chord forms and leading things and all he just it just just poured out of him you know he knew what knew what to do and that that Transferred straight into his arranging and, and orchestrating all the same thing. You know, it's always it's always well thought out. It always swung like the Dickens, you know.
That sounds like one giant guitar. Those two guys, Lloyd and Mundell, play wonderfully together, and it's so tight and so steady. Just beautiful. That's Snowfall, yes, by Claude Thornhill. It's somewhat of a jazz standard. A lot of folks have recorded it over the years. But that is on the CD. This one's for Charlie by Mundell Lowe and Lloyd Wells. And we'll provide a link somewhere in the description or in the comments section so you can find where you can go on the internet and listen to all of these recordings and more of these podcast recordings. I'm Brian Hillegas. Thank you for joining me in listening and enjoying the stories of composer, arranger, writer, guitarist, all things music, Lloyd Wells.